In whose interests is it to sabotage these pipelines? Good morning. Uh, that's a great question. I think I think the question of motive is is um, with the pipelines need to be paired with the development that happened really late last night uh, as the market as the gas markets were coming to a close, and that's a Gazprom. Um, issued a statement, a threat almost, I would say, uh, to the Ukrainians regarding um, potentially sanction, sanctioning uh, NAFTA gas. And if they did that, uh, that would cut flows of gas through Ukraine, which is one of the last two remaining routes to market for Europe. So if you take that and pair it with the events of the gas leaks on Nord Stream 1 and 2, then you, you start to see that there's, as, as, you, as your reporter said, there's, it's much more than a coincidence going on here. Tom, um, I don't know how much you know about subsea uh, activity laying these pipelines, but one assumes that you need special underwater vehicles to do this kind of sabotage. I don't know a huge amount about this, but I would imagine that's the case. Does that suggest that it has to be a state operator to be able to cause these kind of leaks below the oceans? I think that's a reasonable conclusion, but similarly, I'm, I'm not an engineer. But what, what I can definitely tell you is that the, the, the Geological Survey of Denmark has said, you know, the seismic activity that they registered in those evenings when those blasts happened was uh, more equatable to blasts as opposed to earthquakes. Uh, and that says a lot that something, something was hit uh, as opposed to it, it being a result of uh, natural causes, let's say. Uh, Tom, very good morning to you. Um, how vulnerable is the vast array of pipelines uh, in and around the North Sea, in and around the Baltic uh, and elsewhere? If you can do it to these two pipes, which are carrying a minimal amount of gas uh, in them, you can do it to other pipelines, presumably, as well. Is the security around pipelines, understandably, just non-existent in parts of these, sea these huge seas? I think the security situation is being uh, evaluated. We've heard from the Norwegians, which obviously have a vast offshore network, that they're, they're uh, looking into this much more closely now. They've seen uh, drones, apparently, in, in, in recent weeks off, offshore their network. But I think the, the, the explosions uh, that we saw in the Baltic with Nord Stream 1 and 2 were, again, adding to that element of it not being a coincidence, was that they were happening in international waters. Very, very close to Danish waters, very, very close to Swedish waters, but in an international water. So if you've got uh, kit pipeline in, 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 in territorial waters, then I, I think, you know, that, that would be a, a change in, in the dynamic and escalation if you, if you, if you think of it from that perspective. Um, so, yes, I think we need, uh, operators are going to be more vigilant, but I think that would be a, an extra new step in, in, in the situation that we're uh, talking about.